Hey everyone, it's Matt Mover, and in this episode, I want to give my opinion on the M1907 SL Sweeper, one of the M1907 SL variants available in Battlefield 1. The M1907 SL Sweeper is a weapon available in the Medic class, and the thing I like the most about the Medic class is the ability to quickly self heal and get yourself back into the fight quickly. Now in the medic class you have a series of fast firing semi-automatic weapons all of which are typically high damaging but requiring 3-4 to four shots to the body to get a kill depending on the range you engage at. Well all the M1907 SL variants require the same 3 shots but up to 5 shots to get a kill meaning that this weapon is just as viable in close quarters but manages to not do as well the further out you reach with it. Added to this is the fact that the M1907 SL variants have the slowest muzzle velocity of all the medic class rifles, meaning that it becomes harder to hit moving targets at range because you have to lead more than with the other rifles on offer. So where does this weapon fit in then? It obviously does less damage and has a slower muzzle velocity, so what's the point of it? Well, I'll tell you. Firstly, the M1907 SL Sweeper has the second lowest vertical recoil of all the Medic class rifles at 0.56, beaten only by the auto-loading 8.25 extended, but that weapon does even less damage than the Sweeper, and that weapon also doesn't have the main benefit which the M1907 SL Sweeper provides. And this benefit is of course its ability to fire at fully auto. Now there are a few drawbacks to firing fully auto, mainly that your accuracy will suffer greatly so it's better to burst in 2-3 to three shots ideally but bursting is quite easily managed thanks to its low recoil and quite low fire rate. So when you're caught in a face to face engagement or have a number of enemies in very close proximity to you, you don't need to worry about spam tapping your trigger, you can simply hold onto the trigger and destroy your opponents especially with the hip fire of this weapon which really is fantastic for enemies that are around the 10 meter mark or closer. So ideally where you'll want to be using this weapon is as an aggressive close quarters player moving around at speed and keeping yourself out of the crosshairs of enemy marksmen and the best way to do this is by strafing and hip firing at the same time for close quarters enemies. Now you can get a few accurate shots off at distanced enemies provided they're not moving around too much but just bear in mind the likelihood of getting a kill will be dependent on those enemies having already sustained damage for you to be able to finish them off because of this weapon's low damage at distance. It's certainly worth trying to damage enemies to help your team but sometimes this could result in you missing a close range enemy or running out of the rounds you need to take advantage of this weapon's automatic capability if someone happens to rush up into you. Now, given that you'll want to be as light as possible for this setup, I'd recommend going without the bayonet. Now, there are no specific statistics yet on the bayonet's penalties, however, one thing I can be certain of is that your character's movement speed improves without it, and so if you're going to be strafing around and destroying close range targets, you'll want to be as fast as possible while doing so. The bayonet is a fantastic attachment to use but it usually results in you getting killed shortly after going in for a charge so it really isn't the most tactical option anyway unless you feel you need to use it for that extra sprint boost when getting into and out of cover. I'd also recommend customising the sights to have the lowest magnification zoom possible given that you'll primarily be engaging at the close range mark and you might want to aim down sights for those enemies that are around the 20 to 30 metre mark. As I mentioned earlier, I would advise against engaging enemies further away because the drop off starts on the 20 meter mark and becomes almost twice as less powerful per shot when you engage at over 40 meters. So just be mindful of this weapon's lack of power at those ranges and try to position yourself around a lot of cover. Use your med bags to quickly heal yourself and move around into other nearby positions of cover to surprise and harass enemies that are trying to move onto your team's position. Finally, I strongly recommend this weapon due to its fully auto capability and the fact that it falls into the medic class with the ability to quickly self heal makes this setup a personal favourite. Just be careful about not overreaching with this weapon. I really hope you've enjoyed this review of the M1907 SL Sweeper and I'm looking forward to doing the next one. Let me know what you think in the comments below and of course if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all again soon, Map Mover out.